In this video, we're going to be discussing titration reactions, which are a type of experiment used to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. One possible application of titration is in testing drinking water safety. If we know that our drinking water is contaminated with acid or base, but we don't know the concentration, we can do a controlled neutralization reaction in order to determine the concentration of acid or base so that we know how much of the other we need to add in order to neutralize it. The setup of every titration works the same way with two pieces of glassware. This large tube at the top here is what we call a burette. Now every titration involves the reaction between two different solutions. The solution in which we know the concentration is stored in the burette so that we can control the rate at which we add that solution into our unknown in order to neutralize it. The solution where we know the concentration is what we call the titrant, hence why we refer to this procedure as titration. Inside the bottom piece of glassware, which is what we call an Erlenmeyer flask, we store the solution that has our unknown concentration. So in the hypothetical case of drinking water, where we know that our drinking water has a certain amount of acid or base, but we don't know what the concentration is, this is where we would put our unknown solution. And this solution is what we call the analyte, because again, it's the solution that we are analyzing using the titrant. Now, if we consider this hypothetical reaction here, let's refer to the same samples that we're going to be doing in a practice calculation. In our burette, our titrant is 0 0.100 moles per liter of NaOH, and inside of our Erlenmeyer flask, we have of an unknown concentration, but a certain amount of chloric acid. Let's hope that nobody is drinking this water because a high concentration of chloric acid is strong enough to burn through skin. Now, eventually, we will neutralize this chloric acid by adding a certain amount of NaOH within. And because we know the mole ratio between the two is one to one, and if we know what the concentration of our titrant is, we can measure the volume of the titrant that we add and multiply it by our concentration in order to know how many moles of NaOH we added, which can help us determine the moles of our unknown. The problem is, how do we know when exactly it is that our acid is neutralized? Because remember that most acids completely dissolve in water and are colorless. This is a problem because we don't know when our neutralization reaction will be complete. So determining the volume of our titrant that we add is going to be difficult. The solution to this is to add something that we call a pH indicator that changes color at a specific pH in order to indicate that our solution has been neutralized. People familiar with pH indicators will recognize the light pink color that forms here when an acid has neutralized because of a specific pH indicator, which is called phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is a good indicator to use because it's colorless in acid, but turns a very light pink color when base is added to it. So how do titration calculations work? Well, as has been mentioned before, we add in a specific volume of titrant, and if we record what that volume is, we can multiply by the concentration of the titrant in order to find the number of moles of NaOH that has been added. Since we know the mole ratio between acid or base, we can then use that to find the number of moles of acid that is present in the original solution. Now, for the sake of experimentation, typically these reactions are done multiple times in order to guarantee a certain result. So the first step that we need to do is to calculate the average volume of our titrant NaOH that has been used by taking all of our volume measurements 
and adding them together and then dividing that by the number of trials. So in this case, it would be all three of our measurements in milliliters, which we then divide by three. Conveniently, this number comes out to being exactly 17.2 milliliters, and this is the volume of the NaOH, our titrant, that we added. We can quickly convert this into liters because that's what we would need in order to use this with concentration calculations. Next, we need to make sure that all of our mole ratios are correct. So there's only one H plus that chloric acid uses and one OH minus, meaning that our salt is going to be sodium chlorate, which again is not relevant, but more importantly, it's the water that indicates that our acid and base have been neutralized. Now, if we know what volume of our titrant was added in, we can go back to our known concentration, which is 0 0.100 moles of NaOH, and we can multiply the average volume of our titrant used, 0 0.0. 172 liters and now that we know the number of moles of NaOH that was added we know that the mole ratio between base and acid is one to one meaning that our number of moles of base must also be equal to the moles of acid in our reaction here so we can see left over that we have moles of our acid present and the final step to calculate what the initial concentration of acid that was used is to go back and see how many liters our original sample was, which turns out to be 25 milliliters. So we can rewrite that as 0 0.0250 liters. And if you put all this into your calculator, you should be calculating the moles of our unknown acid divided by the volume of the acid solution before the reaction and this number comes out to 0 0.0688 moles of chloric acid per liter. And this is how we use titration in order to determine an unknown concentration of a solution that we've never seen before.